Hello, thank you for joining me for a summer buyer webinar. There are two types of properties you can buy in Park City. My name is Dean DeLeon. I'm a buyer's consultant for the Wilstein team here at Keller Williams in beautiful Park City, Utah. In this webinar, we're going to go over some fun summer activities, uh, do a quick market update, talk about the two types of properties you can buy, inferior properties and quality properties, and how to be successful in purchasing these high demand properties. We'll get started here with some uh, summer activities in town. The Park City Mountain Resort opened on May 26th. They've got the Alpine slide, which is pictured here, an Alpine coaster, which is similar to the slide, but the sled itself is connected to the tracks like a roller coaster, a miniature golf course, kids park, the chairlifts are open for uh, mountain biking and hiking, or even just scenic chairlift rides if you'd like. There's horseback riding. They put in a new Alpine Disc golf course, which is all the new rage here. Uh, and the Ga Canyons Golf Course has opened, the real golf course. Uh, and the Canyons has a bike park as well with different jumps and loop-de-loops. And then you can wrap up every Saturday afternoon with some live music at the Payday Pad uh, between 3 and 5 p.m. The Payday Pad is located right there at the base of the Payday Chairlift. Uh, in the Park City Village. Deer Valley opens up on June 16th. They've got the chairlifts open for mountain biking and hiking. Uh, they also have horseback riding. They've got stand-up paddleboard uh, in the lake that's located in the lower Deer Valley area. Park City Stand-Up Paddleboard Company sets up a shop there as well where you can rent the boards if you don't have your own or you could head out to the lake and do a little bit of fly fishing. Uh, and then we've got the Deer Valley Concerts uh, which are always a blast. Uh, every Wednesday they host a free concert to the public in the amphitheater area at the base of uh, Deer Valley Resort and Snow, Snow Park Lodge area. Uh, the gates open for those concerts at 4 on Wednesday uh, and the music starts at 5. It runs through 8. You're allowed to bring uh, snacks and beverages as long as it, there's no glass and you can just bring a blanket or, or, or a chair and enjoy the music and the beautiful Park City evenings. Always a fun time. A lot of good people out there. <clears throat> the Utah Olympic Park opened up on May 26th. They have bobsled rides down the actual bo Olympic bobsled track in the summer. Uh, thrilling ride. Always fun to experience that. They've got their own alpine slides, zip line courses throughout, ropes courses where you can master your mountaineering in a safe manner, uh, and extreme tubing where they put you in a tube uh, and you go down the landing of the ski jump, which is very steep. I've seen a lot of people done it, do it. I haven't done it myself, but everybody's got a big smile on their face, whether it's a smile of fear that they're in or, or sheer happiness. I don't know, but uh, it looks like a lot of fun. And then they've got the Flying Ace Freestyle Show uh, at the Olympic Park where U.S. Uh, US ski team members that are on the aerials team have choreographed a program where, where they go off the various jumps at the same time or one after another uh, do their acrobatic flips in the air and then they land into the pool uh, which is an awesome show for everybody that goes and watches it everything they do is amazing I can't imagine doing that stuff very frightening uh, but a lot of fun to watch uh, the Jordanelle Reservoir is opened up a lot of people have already fired up their boats and been out on the lake uh, but if you don't have a boat that's fine you can rent one there or jet skis if you prefer uh, and then if motor, if motor boating is not your thing, you can also rent a cabana, relax at the beach. Um, they've got a kids park for the kids to go out and play, put a life vest on them. They've got lifeguards out there. Uh, but you can also kayak and paddleboard at the Jordan L where you can rent that stuff too if you don't have your own. Uh, but a lot of fun, a lot of lake activities here in Park City. A lot of people are unaware of that, but it is an awesome time uh, for, for the summer. Other Park City events uh, include the weekly Farmer's Market, which is every Wednesday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. through October 11th. They set up shop at the Canyons parking lot at the base of the Cabriolet. Uh, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables are offered. Uh, local vendors go out, sell their merchandise that they've created. Uh, it's really a, a cool thing to have on a weekly basis here in Park City. And then we've got the Park City Silly Market, which is every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, it runs from June 4th through September 17th. That's in the lower lower Main Street area. They close off lower Main Street 
Uh, again, the vendors set up their tents, different merchandise that you can look at and purchase. You can uh, purchase beverages and walk around with it. Uh, a good way to spend your Sunday afternoon. Uh, and then a lot of people's favorite day of the year here in Park City, myself included, uh, is the 4th of July Parade and Celebration. Great parade that goes down Main Street, uh, then transfers over and goes all the way down Park Cav, stops at the city park. Everybody shows up to watch it. The streets are packed. Then after the parade is over, uh, all the people migrate down to the city park where they've got uh, different activities set up, live music, food, beverage, rugby, great way to celebrate on the 4th of July. Then we wrap the day up with two firework shows, one at the Park City Village and the other at the Canyons Village, so you can see the fireworks from anywhere in town. Uh, it's really a great day and you got to experience it. Now that we've covered a lot of the fun summer activities here in Park City, uh, let's jump into a snapshot of the first quarter, or market's first quarter, I'm sorry. Though many resort towns here nationwide have not seen continued market increases from the great 2016 year that we had, that does not appear to be the case here in Park City as the total number of sold properties in the first quarter of this year is up 25% from the first quarter in 2016. Uh, that includes 39% increase for number of condos sold, a 21% increase for number of single family homes sold, uh, and a 4% decrease for vacant lots. Uh, but this number is a little bit skewed due to the fact that it's a very small sampling, uh, just not a lot of vacant lots that are available here in Park City anymore. Uh, with the number of sales seeing a large increase, prices are still on the rise as well. The total dollar vol volume of those sales in quarter one are up 41% from quarter one 2016. Uh, we saw a 44% increase in total dollar volume of sold condos, a 48% increase for single family homes, and an 8% increase in total dollar volume for vacant lots, even though there was a slight decline in number of vacant lot sales. The number of pended sales or properties that went under contract uh, during quarter one saw a 20% increase compared to the first quarter of 2016. Many of these that went under contract later in the quarter will be represented in the second quarter number of sales uh, and total dollar, dollar volume numbers. Total inventory remains low with just 1,123 total listings. This includes condos, single family homes, and vacant lots. And though the inventory is 4% higher than quarter one of 2016, this is still a very low uh, number for an overall market, especially when the demand is still very high. Uh, as quarter one's performance has indicated. With that quick market update in mind, there are two types of properties that you will see as a buyer here in Park City. Uh, depending on what stage you're at with your property search, whether you have just started looking, browsing the internet, been inside some properties, or ready to write an offer, you either have seen or will see inferior properties uh, and quality properties. Inferior properties are also often referred to as fixer-uppers. Uh, there are three types of inferior properties, outdated properties, uh, properties with functional obsolescence, and properties with deferred maintenance. Outdated properties require a varying level of updating depending on your taste as a buyer. Uh, it could be as simple as replacing some flooring to doing a complete facelift to the finishes throughout the home, such as the kitchen countertops, kitchen cabinets, uh, bathrooms, and other fixtures. Functional obsolescence uh, is an older style home where not as in high demand as newer style homes are, meaning they have narrow hallways, uh, sectioned off spaces, the kitchen isn't open to the living space or isn't open to the formal dining room, whereas, uh, whereas the current market demands these op big open spaces. Uh, and, and to make these changes with homes with functional obsolescence, it's going to usually uh, be a little bit more expensive because you're going to have to make some structural changes uh, depending on where the walls are located and, and what's behind them. And then lastly, we've got deferred maintenance, uh, which is simply a lack of normal upkeep. These homes are, are usually going to be a little bit older, but you might have chipped paint on the exterior or the interior, uh, older roofs possibly leaking, um, 
utilities such as your furnace and water heaters that haven't been properly maintained. Uh, this is referred to as deferred maintenance. You will see these properties um, and it is uh, considered an inferior property uh, as far as we're concerned. And it's important to know that pictures can be deceiving here. Uh, when in looking at properties, a lot of people are using the internet to look at the properties. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a property with a buyer where they're just astonished that this looks nothing like the pictures. Uh, and good for the seller, they've hired a, a great photographer uh, and they've taken good pictures, but it looks nothing like it. So it really is important to get into these properties and, and contact me, whether I, if I haven't been inside the property, which I have been inside of a lot of properties, I can go and look at it. If you're not local to go look at it as well, I can take a, a video, which is gonna give you uh, a more clear picture of what the actual property looks like. Uh, and, and it's a process to identify these sometimes, uh, but at the end of the day, we will find them. Opposite of inferior properties are the quality properties. Uh, these are going to include good properties and excellent properties. Uh, there's very limited supply, limited supply overall anyways, but very limited supply of these. Good properties are going to require minor work to personalize the home uh, after you purchase it, before you move in, or an excellent, uh, excellent condition property isn't gonna, going to require any work at all. It's basically turn the key, walk in, you're ready to live in there. Sometimes these come furnished, uh, preferred by second home buyers. Uh, because they aren't local, they're away, they don't have the time or the resources uh, to get here to make these changes. So the second home buyers typically want to purchase the property that's ready to be lived in, ready for their vacations, uh, a little bit more hands off. Uh, both of these properties are going to move quick. And what we mean by move quick is there's a lot of buyers that are out there waiting for these properties to hit the market already. Uh, and once they do, they're ready to put their offer in uh, and they're ready to, to wrap it up and take it off the market and purchase it in themselves. So it's important to know that if what you're looking for falls in this category, uh, we uh, also need to be ready to move quick in order to acquire these properties. Uh, with all that high demand and everything being said, sellers still do need to price their property accordingly. Uh, the buyers in, in our market are very educated, they're tracking the market. Uh, on the internet, communicating with the realtors. I'm constantly updating my clients about the market. Um, and then sellers still tend to overprice their properties on occasion. Not everybody does this, uh, but they get excited. They see the high demand. They think their property is worth more than it is. When this happens, the property will sit on the market a lot longer. They may get a few low ball offers. And sometimes this is the process it takes in order for that seller to come to realization that they're going to need to lower their price uh, in, in order to sell a property and at that point on these properties uh, that's when we're going to want to move on them uh, it sometimes takes a while sometimes it's the best to be the second person under contract on these properties uh, it's just part of the process and uh, these are identifiable we'll be able to see them we will discuss them uh, through communication but overall overpriced properties even though there's a high demand do not sell Now we're gonna go over some tools to be successful uh, at buying these high demand properties. The, the first thing is you need to hear about the property first. Uh, and what I mean by hearing about the property for, first is either seeing it or hearing it through communicating with me, uh, but the listings need to be sent. What we do is we set you up uh, on updates. So every time a property comes on the market, I personally send this property to you, whether you're on our websites or, or a different uh, form of communication, we're discussing these properties as soon as they hit the market, especially if you're ready to pull the trigger and buy the property. Uh, another way to find out about properties are know about them before before they even hit the market, and these are pocket listings. Uh, the Wilson team does, uh, the selling side of, the, side of our team uh, does a lot of listings, and, and then they also have some things in the pipe where the people aren't, the sellers aren't quite ready to put it on the market, uh, but they will in fact sell their property it, this is communicated to me as a buyer's agent and the other buyer's agents on the team. Uh, and then we know that these are available to our buyers. Uh, so nobody else knows about these and we get this information out to you, which is really great. And then oftentimes if property, if I've got a buyer looking for something specific, nothing has come up in a long time. Uh, I personally reach out to other realtors and start asking if they've heard anything that meets this criteria. 
Um, or if they have anything that's about to come on the market that we can get in and start taking a look at and have a jump start on the, the rest of the competition that's out there. Uh, so we need to hear about the property first. Second thing is must be ready to buy. And what, we, what I mean here by ready to buy is have everything in order and ready to submit a strong offer. If you're getting financing, we need to have the pre-approval letter ready uh, so we could submit that with an offer. Or if you're paying in cash, a proof of funds, we could sit, submit with that with an offer. You need to be mentally prepared to go into this and, and committed to purchase this property. And if you haven't, if you haven't contacted a lender, you are getting financing. Contact me, and, and we'll send over a list of preferred lenders that we frequently work with here in Park City uh, and do an excellent job. Thirdly, you got to be ready to pull the trigger. Uh, if you're local, available to see the property as soon as it comes on the market, same day, preferred if it's a high quality property. Uh, if you're not local, you got to be willing to catch a flight and come out and see it. And if you don't want to catch a flight, uh, you ultimately have to be willing to write an offer without seeing it. Now with that being said, uh, I can go and take a video for you of the property, which again gives you a great idea of the layout, a better idea of the finishes uh, and everything surrounding the property itself. Uh, but we always have our due diligence period where you can, uh, typically 14 days, whatever we negotiate into, if you need a little bit longer on that, we can uh, try to do that. But that gives you time to fly out after putting the property under contract. And then within that due diligence period, if you fly out, see the property, you don't like it, you don't want to purchase it anymore, uh, you can cancel it with no consequences or no penalty to you other than the time to come see the property. So the three things that you need to be successful at buying Park City property, you must be the first to hear about the property, you must be ready to buy the property, and you must be ready to act now, or else, uh, unfortunately, somebody else will. As I mentioned before, uh, there's a lot of people that are ready and sitting there waiting for a specific property, and if it's a high-quality property that comes on the market, uh, they're, they're, they're likely going to put an offer, or a lot of times in this market we're seeing multiple offers which draws up some competition, but at least want, you want to get your, your, your bid in the hat and uh, have, have a shot at acquiring the property that you want. If you want to know about any other available properties currently, send me an email, dean at thewilsteinteam.com, or give me a call. This is my cell phone, 435-602. 9093. I'd happy to talk to you about that or send those properties over to you. Or if you have any just general questions about Park City or the market itself that we haven't covered here, again, send me an email, dean at thewilsteinteam.com, or, or give me a call and we'll get you that information. Thank you very much for joining me here with this buyer webinar. I, I appreciate it. My name again is Dean DeLeon, and if you haven't checked out, checked out or aren't registered on one of our websites, uh, please do so, buyparkcitynow.com, view, viewparkcityhomes.com, or viewparkcityrealestate.com. We've got three different sites. Go see which one that you prefer to use. Uh, check it out, browse some properties, ask questions. Uh, we really look forward to working with everybody. Hi, I'm Ron Wilstein, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our webinar today. I trust that you found the information informative and helpful. I want to give you one other item that may be helpful for you, and that is our Park City Link newsletter. This newsletter is filled with all sorts of information about changes in the Park City real estate market and helpful tips for you. It also includes some statistics on the real estate market so you can see trends and changes. And if you're interested in receiving it, feel free to email me at info at thewillsteenteam.com or go to our website at View Park City Real Estate. Dot com. I'll make sure that you get that. And here are our buyer consultant specialists, Jeremy Wilstein, Kathy Litsky, and Dean DeLeon. Feel free to consult them with any questions you may have about buying a home or an investment property in Park City. And of course, you can watch our Park City Market Talk webinar every month. We update it and post it at our website, viewparkcityrealestate.com forward slash webinars.